Hi everyone, Materium here again with another battle report. And this one is an uh, entry for Mr. Malorian's Around the World in 12 Battles game. It is Dwarfs versus My Ogre Kingdoms at 3000 points battle line scenario. Okay, so here's the board set up. Um, only two things to really pay attention to are uh, the long wall that the dwarves are holding right now. Uh, that's a blessed bulwark. And the forest right in front of that uh, is a mysterious forest. It ends up being a venom thicket, so that does kind of cause some problems uh, a little ways down the line. So let's go ahead and get into deployment. And I'm going to go ahead and, and say I can't, I don't remember if my dwarf player gave me uh, his list or not. So I'm going to be running, describing his list pretty much from memory. Okay, so starting uh, left to right, he has a big unit, uh, I believe it's 28 uh, long beards with hammer and shields. He's using the gyrocopter, or the gyro bomber there as unit filler. Uh, then he has a cannon. Uh, that cannon is runed up with the rune of forging and the rune of burning, so it's a flaming cannon. Uh, next, he has, uh, what is that, uh, 10, 20, 30 uh, iron drakes. Behind them is a unit of 30 or so uh, hammers with his dwarf lord and BSB in there and his dwarf lords on shield bearers kitted out with multi wound um, nastiness. Uh, then he has another cannon that just has the rune of forging and then there's a, another large unit of uh, long beards with great weapons and again he's using a gyrocopter as a unit filler in them as well and then over here behind the walls he has two five-man uh, ranger units I guess he's gonna be trying to use as chaff uh, over there okay and the ogre side from left to right starts with chew the giant and then one two three individual saber tusks then we have six iron blasters with a bellower and a champion, or sorry, lead belchers with a bellower and a champion. Uh, three yetis with a gray back. Up on the hill is my iron blaster. Next to that is a unit of 17 ogres with iron fist. Uh, hanging out with them is Tokron face crusher with the armor of silvered steel, the greedy fist, and the other trickster shard. Then there is uh, Chog the Toothy, my level 4 Slaughtermaster to the Great Maul, with Grut Sickle, Talisman of Preservation, and the Iron Curse Icon. And Gat the Old, my Battle Standard Bearer with the Dragon Hide Banner in that as well. And then over here I have a unit of 10 Iron Guts in full command there. Hanging out with them is Ungoro Flame Belch, my Fire Belly, uh, level 2 to the Lord of Fire, obviously. He has the Power Stone and the Ruby Ring of Ruin, so he has two fireballs. So, Ogres get turn 1, and uh, my plan here on the left side is basically just to come at him pretty aggressively, hopefully distracting him from the giant pile of death in that Ogre Horde that's coming uh, onto his other side. Uh, I was thinking maybe if I can draw off uh, one of these units here with some double fleas from the saber tusks, I'd be in good shape. And if not, I can use them to sweep in there and get those cannons. Um, and at this point, I'm just marching, or not marching, I'm moving the lead belchers up as I want to get into a shooting match between them and the iron drakes just to kind of see what is what. Um, I am very afraid for my yetis because those iron drakes are all flaming shots, so I move them right up to the wall to get that hard cover. And over here, my ogre horde moves up to garrison the wall as well, uh, and the iron guts move through the forest, uh, I think they march through the forest to get there, and, uh, or no, they attempted to charge one of the, the, the far back, uh, ranger group but they needed 12 I failed so I end up there and that's when we find out that it's a poison forest and dangerous terrain uh, ends up doing two wounds to one of my iron guts I was thinking that's not necessarily a great way for the iron guts to start off this game um, so hopefully they'll be able to make up for it as now I've got some very easy charges to clear those chaff out before he gets the idea to redirect me away from 
his uh, his main blocks. And I'm hoping I've got with the fire belly there. I've got some magic that maybe I can just melt them off the board, and and I don't have to worry about them at all. So magic didn't really do much, and par for the course in my shooting. Uh, when I do actually hit with a cannon, it only does one wound, so uh, I took one dude off of his cannon, and that's pretty much it. And my lead belchers managed to hit uh, the iron drakes, but I only killed two of them. Um, I, I guess it's, it's good to get started early, but I really kind of had wished I had nailed a couple more. But uh, I, I'm, I'm not looking for forward to the return volley that I'm going to be facing on his turn. So the dwarves do absolutely no moving, so we go into shooting, and uh, the iron drakes just absolutely open up on my lead belchers, kill one ogre, or one lead belcher, and put two wounds on the second. And both of his cannons completely fell short um, of hitting anything, but the... Rangers actually do another number, even with the cover on the iron uh, uh, guts, and finish off that final one that was wounded by the dangerous terrain in the forest. So we go into Ogre turn two, and I started off by succeeding two charges into his cannon with flaming on it, with my thunder tu or my saber tusks. And yeah, I'm, I pretty much rely on the Saber Tusks. They're going to kill this cannon and then overrun so that I can be behind his lines and not get charged. And then here, my Ogre Horde charges into the first unit of uh, Rangers guarding the wall. And my Iron Guts fail their second straight charge into that other unit of Rangers. Um, they've rolled two fours on consecutive uh, turns this time, and it's just discouraging when such a great unit like that just spends all their time fuddling around back there. Um, I don't do any charges over here, but uh, during remaining moves, I move uh, Chu and the Saber Tusk around here to the flank. I'm figuring even if I don't charge into the flank, he's probably going to have to turn around to face me, which is going to start diverting his focus and maybe break some holes in that castle he's built for himself which is my primary aim here and then in the center i uh move up my iron or my lead belchers so that they can keep shooting and i reform the yetis into a conga line uh so that i can get the charge off on the other cannon and hit that without impacting any of his other units uh so that's my plan there um, I'm also hoping that once I kill these uh, five rangers with my big horde unit, I'm actually going to charge and aim for the flank of the iron drakes. Because they're a smaller unit, I should be able to crush them and then reform so that I'm facing both of his other units. That's, that's ultimately the plan for like the next turn or so. So we'll see how it works. So magic again is no big deal. We go on to shooting, and uh, my iron blaster finally remembers what it's there for and takes out that cannon on the side. So it kind of makes the, the move I just did with the Yetis unnecessary, but uh, they're pretty quick, and now that they're in a conga line, they're infinitely more maneuverable. So we'll just kind of hold there and see what they can bring to bear in the next couple turns. And the lead belchers, again, kind of lackluster performance. I think they take out another four of the iron drakes. Um, definitely not thinning down that unit as quickly as I would like. But uh, I'm pretty sure the ogre horde will be able to do the job, so I'm not super concerned about it. Provided, of course, that I can roll better than I have for charges and that they can actually make it in. So we go to combat, and to no one's great surprise, the Ogre Horde crushes the five rangers that are there. And you can actually see the other unit of rangers only has two guys left. I think that was what I got off in Magic this turn. I think I fireballed them and took out three of them, but they held. Um, so now I've got a pretty, well, relatively easy. I need, a, I think, a nine to hit the side of those iron drakes and, and be able to swing in without clipping the long beards, which I can do. It'll just be tight. Uh, then over here, obviously, as I said, the Saber Tusks chew the cannon up and end up overrunning to this point, which I'm very happy with because it puts them behind his lines without them running off the board, uh, which was could have been a concern. 
So we go into uh, Dwarf Turn 2, I guess this is, uh, and the dwarves do uh, swift reform to face the giant and the saber tusk coming in on their flank, uh, which again is kind of what I'm aiming for. I just want him not to be able to respond as quickly when I bring my forces in on the opposite side. So I definitely think this feint is working to my advantage here. Um, over here, he just sort of reorganizes his, uh, uh, his doors. I think he steps them back a little bit, which actually makes my job easier. It means I'll be able to get more in, uh, when I come slamming into the horde here. I think he wasn't, ex or he wasn't expecting me to be aiming for the Iron Drakes. I think he's getting prepped for me slamming my horde straight into his great weapon guys, which would be foolish, and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so, uh, we go into shooting, and the Iron Drakes just open up on my lead belchers again, uh, finish taking off the back rank, and I am just outside of BSB range, and panic, and they turn and run for it. So, we go into Ogre turn three, and I charge again with the Iron Guts, and roll... Snake Eyes for the charge. But luckily I'm close enough where I still hit the Rangers. But his stand and shoot uh, inflicts another wound on the Iron Guts, which just hurt my brain. And as you can see here, I was super successful uh, getting the Horde into the flank of the Iron Drakes. Uh, I gotta say, this surprised the hell out of my opponent. He was expecting me to come mix it up with those great weapon guys. And when I told him I was charging the Iron Guts, he was like, what? <laughs> uh, or charging the, the Iron Drakes, he was like, what? Um, and so now I end up getting three rank, or three files in here, so it's going to be ugly. Um, and then over here on the right flank, uh, mainly to keep his, that one unit spinning and out of combat, I end up uh, not being march blocked with anything, and so I run the giant and the saber tusk around to the side of that unit again. Um, as much as I love my giant, there is no way that I'm risking running him into the front of a dwarf unit. So uh, I'm much happier using him just to spin around. And my lead belchers fail to rally and run a good long way. I think there's something like four or five inches from the edge of the board at this point. Um, so I'm going to have one good chance to rally them again uh, before they are gone and my opponent gets the points for it. So as far as magic goes, this marks the turning point in magic for the game, where I pretty much dominate the magic phase from here on out. Uh, because of that, I think I get troll guts on my big horde unit, and I pretty much get to keep it there most of the game. Um, I keep casting it, and... I'm just doing much better dice rolls than he is, and he, he can't stop it at this point. Um, but over here on the unimportant flank, uh, I never thought I'd be describing a unit of ten Iron Guts as the unimportant flank. <laughs> I uh, obviously crush the remaining two uh, Rangers um, and don't suffer any further wounds there. I think I kill him on impact hits. So over here, uh, I absolutely demolish the Iron Drakes. Um, I brought over my two characters into the front. Impact hits, just crazy beat down. Uh, but there ends up being four of them left. And because his big unit has the, uh, the, the stubborn flag, they don't break. So I have to reform. So my two characters end up on the far side. And now I'm facing the front of that. Uh, great weapon unit that's coming in with no characters on the front wall to, to handle it. Um, has me a little nervous, to be honest, uh, but I'm just, with a horde of ogres, you're kicking out so many attacks, It's he's going to have to really come in and just blow the doors off me to really be able to, to put a hurting on me here, uh, particularly with everything else I got coming in to, to scare that next flank. So, top of dwarf turn three, or sorry, bottom of dwarf, bottom of turn three, um, the dwarves slam both of these units into the front of my ogres. Now, this is a lot, and I'm, I am concerned, but I think the one benefit I have here is that I'm in a horde, and neither of these two units are. So, I'm getting a lot more attacks, even split between the two units. Um, I should be racking up 
combat res like crazy. And again, with troll guts on the unit, um, the only thing I'm really worried about at this point is his dwarf lord. Because um, his dwarf lord, I've got three characters plus a champion in there. And with decent rolls, he could eat any one of them for breakfast. And uh, I've really got to not let that happen, which... Uh, Hopefully Troll Guts will be enough to, to make it work, but if not, it could go south for this fight very easily. And so on this flank, uh, my opponent finally decides to ignore the Saber Tusks and the Giants and turn this unit back around to face uh, the big fight that's going on in the middle. I think he realizes the Iron Drakes aren't going to be there for very much longer, and he wants that unit in position uh, to be able to assist if he can make it in. So we go into uh, combat because the dwarves have no shooting left. Um, the dwarf lord challenges and Tokron accepts. He's my most defensive character. I think he's got the best shot. Uh, dwarfs uh, gets two wounds and I troll gut save them both. So the dwarf lord does nothing. Uh, I think I get one wound on him and then the ogres just unload. Uh, I lost one ogre and, a, and took a wound to both the champion and the ogre in the back, and then Chog took a wound, and I killed, looks like about a dozen dwarves between the two units. Unfortunately, uh, he still has that stubborn banner, and uh, I'm going to have to kill both of these units to a man, and I'm hoping I can do so before that other unit gets in. Um, if not, it could be problematic. So we go into ogre turn... Uh, four, and the rest of my army shows up to help. Uh, I succeed a charge into the back of the hammers with the saber tusk, and I get two more saber tusks into the flank. Uh, I'm sorry, the back of the long beards. I get two more saber tusks in the, and chew the giant into the flank of the long beards, and then the yeti conga line in the front of the long beards. So, uh, or the hammers rather. So, uh, definitely some good throwdown. However, over here, I roll yet another four for charge and fail to get the Iron Guts into the other flank. So, uh, my left flank is doing great. These Iron Guts are just uh, not doing it today. Uh, they just can't get their bulk moving, which is uh, a very, very sad thing. But in happier news, my Lead Belchers do finally rally before they go off the board, and the Iron Blaster uh, comes up to try and shoot down and thin out that uh, longbeard unit that's not in combat with everything. So we go into combat, and you can see from the crossed arms of my opponent how pissed off he is. Um, I haven't lit iron... Uh, I have troll guts up on the unit again. Uh, I end up we still doing the challenge between Tokron and his Dwarf Lord. He does nothing to Tokron because of troll guts. I sneak one more wound through. And then the giant yells and balls before any of the dwarves can go. So I'm doing a little bit of wounds to his to his general, and then he's getting nothing back at me. Um, but even if he's losing by two because of the yells and balls, uh, he's uh, not going anywhere. But it's it's allowing me to slowly chip away at his dwarf lord with basically no risk to my ogres. So uh, that's I, I think it's pretty funny. Um, he decidedly doesn't. <laughs> So we go into dwarf turn, and uh, the iron or the longbeards here fail a charge into the flank of the yetis and stagger forward an inch or two. And then in combat, we carry on with the challenge. He manages to actually do three wounds to Tokron this time, despite troll guts. Not enough to kill him. I sneak through a couple more wounds, so his dwarf lord's on his last wound, and then the giant yells and balls. So uh, <laughs> for two. Two combat turns now, uh, the dwarves just haven't been able to swing. And I've been swinging with all of the the extra stuff uh, that's all initiative four. Uh, my ogres aren't going either, but uh, my characters and the yetis and uh, the, the saber tusks are all slowly pinging away at his units. I'm taking a few off here and there. So we go into ogre turn, and I roll another set of double ones for the Iron Gut Charge. So they lumber forward another inch and are absolutely useless to me at this point. <laughs> and here is actually the last uh, picture I have of the battle. Um, 
This turn during combat, I get Troll Guts up again. Tokron kills his general. The Yetis kill his BSB. Uh, the Ogres just annihilate both units. You can see the big pile of dead he's got sitting there. Um, and uh, they, they break. Uh, and at this point, I've still got my entire army against one unit of uh, Longbeards that was being pinged down a little bit by cannon fire and the lead belchers. So uh, my, my opponent went ahead and called it, so we didn't bother going ahead with turn six. Um, but as you can see, this is... If, I literally still have everything on the board. My opponent didn't capture uh, any points the whole game. So uh, that that... That's pretty much that. Can't get much more decisive a victory than than that. All right, so uh, victory for the Ogre Kingdoms. Uh, this may very well be the most decisive victory that I've ever had. Um, you'll notice, for those of you who have been watching a lot of my videos, I don't often do the Ogre Horde, and uh, this is pretty much the reason why. There's not a whole heck of a lot, I think, that can handle it. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can redirect it and everything, but I've got enough little stuff that I can throw around to take care of chaff and, and redirectors and stuff, so it's going to hit something eventually, and when it does, it just bulldozes them, particularly when I'm tossing troll guts, and, and I mean, it's they're just regening, it's, it's a bad day. So, uh, I, I really just did it this time because I kind of wanted to show off for the since it's my army's turn in the Around the World for 12 games. Um, <laughs> so don't expect to see this kind of army out of me very often, uh, particularly in the, the narratives, because we all like having fun, and, and this just was not fun for my opponent. Um, but at least after this, we played another quick game where uh, it basically was the other way around. Uh, he picked up my empire, and tore up some Nurgle demons with it. Unfortunately, I didn't take pictures of that one, so it won't be a battle report, but... So we ended up leaving the knight with a draw. Uh, one victory for me, one victory for him, which is good. Um, in general, uh, a couple of things I thought my opponent could have done better. Uh, first of all, if he's going to castle like that, he should have castled all the way in one corner. If he had denied me a flank, I wouldn't have been able to kind of split his attentions like I did, and he would have forced me into bringing more stuff into the front of him instead of, of hitting the, the flank with of the Iron Drakes. Um, and I think he could have weathered it a little bit better. Uh, it still would have been difficult, but he at very least would have gotten some shots off when I charged the Iron Drakes and may have thinned down the horde just a little bit. Um, I definitely think, as strange as it was, my MVP of the whole battle was my giant. Um, I think what I needed was those two combat turns of when he yelled and bawled. Because it let me get in, do some hits, and then avoid everything that the dwarves could have thrown back at me. Um, yeah, my ogres weren't attacking either, but I had my characters, I had uh, enough speed with the uh, yetis and the saber tusk that I was doing wounds and so he was just losing units or losing men out of his unit and was not able to bring anything back to the table uh, and, and that was just a, an auto win for the ogres it, with getting that um, so it's interesting to me the, the giant in general because it is so random sometimes it can just do amazing kind of crazy things like this and then it sometimes it just does nothing <laughs> Um, I still love it, and I still love my Yetis, and I'm still playing with both of them, but uh, that was pretty much it. Um, I definitely like the Fire Belly, um, particularly with the Ruby Ring of Ruin, the, the couple of Fireballs a turn. Uh, even though I wasn't really doing much with it, uh, it was enough where my opponent was having to kind of throw dice to stop his small units from getting toasted, and it let me get the big spells off when I needed to. Um, most specifically, Troll Guts. Uh, just doing that, and I think I had one turn where I had the plus one strength buff on the horde too, so it was, it was kind of ugly. Um, but all in all, it was a fun game. Um, we're hoping to get back. I, I'm having, I think, one more non-narrative game tomorrow, 
and uh, we're hoping next Tuesday to finally get back to the narratives. It's been kind of a crazy week around here. Um, and we'll be doing the Empire, an Empire and Beastmen game that's a siege, and then the winner is going to be taking on Bretonia. So I should have two more narrative uh, battles up in the next week, week and a half or so. Um, so just keep keep an eye out for that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please feel free to comment, uh, like the video, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, otherwise, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching.